And we are the Coalition Loud and Proud, Outrage Porn Free, Civilly Disobedient Media, broadcasting live on the Worldwide Coalition Media Network here at the Go Local Live Broadcast Center, deep in the heart of the city we love, Providence, Rhode Island. Facebook.com slash The Coalition Radio. On the Mighty Mighty Twitter at Coalition underscore radio. And, of course, the mothership at CoalitionRadio.us. So, like most nights, and it's my fault, not my producers, Joe's a pro. Me, I'm a blabbermouth. But I want to get right to it. In what was probably going to become a two-part segment as opposed to the mm-hmm. one-parter that we had envisioned initially, joining me for the second time is someone that I'm proud to call a friend. We've only met a couple of times very briefly, but I look forward to working with him in the in the ongoing fight for liberty is Tom Arnold. Tom, welcome back to the coalition. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate that, my friend. The, it's great being here with you again. There's a whole lot uh, going on, and you know we've got great things to talk about to, to accomplish liberty in our lifetime. Ab- absolutely. Now, Tom and I are both members of something called the Radical Caucus. And the Radical Caucus is, my understanding, after doing some research, um, uh, is, is the oldest actual ongoing caucus, with a few brief interruptions, in the Libertarian movement. The Libertarian Party was effectively founded in the early 70s, and we refer to ourselves at the Libertarian Caucus as the Libertarian wing of the Libertarian Party. Uh, you know, and, and, and so when we say radical, it's, it's kind of fascinating to me, Tom, because most people consider your, your workaday libertarian to be pretty radical. So what does it say when we claim to be the radical libertarians? <laughs> but but well, give, go ahead, give, us, give yeah. us a little background. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Pat, you know, we're radical in the sense that, uh, um, um, well, I like to refer to us as barbarians at the gate, right? <laughs> we're... Our, our, we're, we're not. We're, we're not. We're not the. We're not the Democrats. We're not the Republicans. Our goals are not the same as those parties. You know. So our message as libertarians needs to be radical. David Nolan, you know, he he claimed that we had to be a radical libertarian. Yeah. So uh, that's where we got to go. Now, the Libertarian Party platform and the attendant statement of principles are. Sacred ground. If you were to take the time to watch, God forbid it's dismal, any one of the Democratic or Republican national conventions, Tom and I are old enough to remember a time when there would be floor fights over the platform, that the platform mm-hmm. would be on live TV, that, mm-hmm. that it meant something. Well, one only has to watch a convention now to understand that that has been completely subsumed by the marketing of vague ideas that allegedly represent the party. And when I talk about vague ideas, these have been market-tested, market-approved, and that either of the two major parties really have a belief system or really stand for something. To me, the most provocative moment in that was a few years back when the Republicans were crushed by the newly emergent Barack Obama. And there were emergency meetings. And this was publicized, by the way. That's the astonishing thing about this, Tom, that these were all publicized. There was a collective beating of the breast and you know, self-flagellation by Republicans that we had to, that they had to come together and present a platform that would help them become elected and would appeal to categories that were so that they lost so badly in Barack Obama's election. And first and foremost of that was the Hispanic community. So in a very public way, you had party leaders saying. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to get together and figure out what it's going to take to get elected by them. Now, let's think about that for a moment. Not only mm-hmm. did they say that, they said that on live TV, and at the same time, the media seemed to think that was okay, when clearly that's bass backwards, as we say up in Rhode Island. You know, you should yeah. have a belief system and work on convincing people. The, the libertarian movement is people are already gearing up for the floor battles for the platform for 2020. Committees have been formed, positions have been staked out, and and, and expect real emotion, real research, real work into crafting that. There were a handful of attempts to change the platform. One of the most significant ones was our good friend Sarah's success in adapting, ironically after our last guest, a, a platform in the, or a statement in the platform supporting the rights of sex workers and advocating for the decriminalization of it. There were other attempts which have brought what might have brought us further to the left. 
Most nefariously, though, and, uh, and all credit to our, our secretary, uh, there was an attempt to change something called the Statement of Principles and change the percentage. The Statement of Principles is so fundamental to the libertarian belief system that it, the only way to change the Statement of Principles is at a libertarian national convention, and it must be done so with a vote of seven-eighths, seven-slash-eight of the voting delegates. That's yes. how it's seriously taken. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Tom, and I want him to give us a sense of what the Statement of Principles say and what they mean. Well, to, to first understand the Statement of Principles, you kind of have to understand the times that were there for libertarians. You figure, you know, you have to understand that when the party was founded, it was founded um, in the midst of the Vietnam War. Um, you had uh, LBJ, you had Richard Nixon, LBJ who expanded the federal government several times over, uh, programs that have never ended, uh, the largest since uh, the New Deal. Um, then you had Richard Nixon and his drug wars. And, and you know, I, I got to thinking about Richard Nixon and remember, you remember the price caps when, yep. you know, when he went and, and, he, and he put caps on, uh, on gas and for, for nine weeks he put caps on things where the price just couldn't go up. So it was government, you know, uh, oppression in the free market. Mm -hmm. And um, the Libertarian Party was founded during all those times. The people don't realize just how bad those times actually were. And so um, what we have, Pat, is we, we came up with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a statement of principles first in 72, and then a change in that statement of principles in order to allow anarchists to be a part of the party and feel like they had some say in it in 74. And the, the thing that gets me the most about the statement of principles is that it's, a, it's a, our philosophy, our basic philosophy, it's a political agenda, and it's also a practical application of, uh, of, of what we can do and can accomplish in the future. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things that are most important about it. Um, but, you know, our primary is that we're going to challenge the cult of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. Right. That's my, my, my favorite one. I've done T-shirts with that on it. I've done business cards. That's on the back of my business card. And, um, and it's funny because a few people have said to me, well, that, that's a little complex. I've had people, when I've worn that T-shirt, Stop and actually follow me to read the entire statement. And I know they weren't following me for my good looks. So, <laughs> you know, what, but, what, but what does that mean to you as, as someone who's, who's, whose life has been vested in fighting for liberty? Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, you know, the, the cult of omnipotent state, we see it, right? Look how big government is now, you know, how, how every aspect of our life is affected by it, right? More so than when you and I were growing up, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so so it's got to be brought down. It's like I tell people, you know, it, it reminds me of uh, Wiley Coyote, big government is Wiley Coyote falling off the cliff, right? Mm -hmm. And he hadn't gone poof yet. And uh, you know, as libertarians, our goal is to be the roadrunner, right? Standing behind him and you know, uh, helping him push himself off so that big government will eventually be broken up or go away. The omnipotent state and the rights of the individual. We like to say that as libertarians, and particularly as radical libertarians, that we defend the rights of the ultimate minority. And that, of course, is the individual. Now, That's right. In the next statement, I'm going to read this, and you tell me your reaction to this. We hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live in whatever manner they choose, so long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal rights of others to live in whatever manner they choose. Well, we, We've got a pledge know, like that, I, but what does that mean to you? What it means to me, I mean, you know, that's the one thing that I live by, Pat. You know, I made a Facebook post yesterday that regardless 
of where we stand in this country, that that's the most significant statement we can make as libertarians. We can argue pro this and or, or anti this, but the, at the end of the day, as libertarians, the, the that that second paragraph of our statement of principles has to be the statement that we're willing to stand by. That that individuals can can have, have the sole dominion over their lives, right? You know, um, people say you talk about sovereign individuals. Well, it's not about sovereign individuals. It's that it's so much as it is about uh, you know control of everything we want in our lives, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that's uh, that's that's what has to be in order for us to um, to 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 live as libertarians. Now, in the last segment I had, now you, I think you caught the tail end of it. Mm-hmm. I had a young woman, Maya Moreno, who is a political activist, uh, very articulate clearly in command mm-hmm. of the statistics and issues surrounding her political activism, and is also simultaneously an active professional sex worker. What right do we have as individuals coexisting with her to tell her that if that is her choice, she has no right to make that choice? Do we have any rights whatsoever in that? No, no, sir, we don't. We don't. It's, it's, it's her body, her choice, right? I mean, you know, that's that's the bottom line. Um, government, it's basically government we're talking about, Pat. You and I can disagree with her um, in her choice of life, right? But we don't have to. Uh, we're, we're not we're not going to condemn her or punish her for her choices, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, I. I I feel there's, there's a big issue going around now that, that, that I'm on one side of that issue, but I'm not condemning people because they're on the other side of that, right? Mm-hmm. Or I, I, But I'm, I, we're getting government out of it. And that young woman who was wonderful, articulate, and a great advocate, um, you know, she has the right to live her life as she chooses, because she's not harming anybody, right? Right. And, 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 and the second part of the sentence is as important as the first part. We, mm-hmm. have, we have something called the non-aggression principle here is in the libertarian movement. And we also, when we join the libertarian party, we essentially swear an oath. Talk, talk about the NAP and how, how important that is it's not just enough to agree to support individual liberty, but how important is the second part of that sentence, particularly in how we govern now through so much force? Yeah, well, you know, look, you know, mm, there are things I want to say, but I'm trying to avoid hitting hot buttons. Feel but, free, by um, the way. I, I guess I've, I've, I've hit a few yeah. tonight. Feel free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, the thing about it is um, forcibly interfering with the equal rights of others to live in whatever manner they choose. You know, um, you know, it, it, that, that's it, Pat. Um, you know, uh, I can't force anyone to live, however, live in, a, in a way different than what I do, you know, or live like I do. It's not my responsibility to do that mm-hmm. um, it is uh, for each person to be responsible for themselves right mm-hmm. and uh, you know um, now there are people that we can help you know who are irresponsible if we choose to do that but uh, we're, we're not going to hurt people because they're irresponsible right. you know that, I mean, there are certain things that they would do in a libertarian society that that would be uh, reach some kind of rule of, uh, of, of of agreement, break some kind of rule of agreement. But uh, but as far as what this uh, says in our, our SOP, you know, we're not going to punish her for what she does, right, or what she says. Because ultimately, is there is, as long as the work she's engaging is consensual, is there any harm? 
being done to really anyone. I, I mean, it, no, there's no harm done, Pat. You know, she has a transactional relationship, right? Just mm-hmm. like any business, right? Mm-hmm. I have a business, and and my family does, and and we do transactions with people, you know, and have contracts, and you know, we fulfill those contracts, and and uh, we receive um, money for doing that, and uh, she's in the same boat, you know. She's uh, fulfilling that contract that she's made with that individual, and there you are. The next line, governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, Mm -hmm. all political parties other than our own grant to government the right to regulate the lives of individual and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. Powerful, yeah. powerful stuff. Give us some examples in, 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 as, we, uh, as we live a day-to-day life in the United well, States, you know, the, how that's happening. The first one, obviously, is taxation, right? Taxation with, you know, without representation because we don't have it. The, the whole idea of a social contract Mm-hmm. Right, that uh, you know, did I sign? Did you sign a social contract, Pat? No, I don't remember I, I that. Did, I never did. You know, um, they tell me that uh, when my parents got a uh, got a um, uh, birth certificate for me, that they signed a social contract, or that I got a social security card, that that was a social contract. But you know, it's it's uh, you know, under the punishment of law, you know, there are certain things that we wind up doing, you know, even the most notable anarchist that I am personally acquainted with has to make certain acquiescence to uh, the government. Right. But in, in, in a perfect world, uh, that acquiescence wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. No, and, 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 and so when you look at the line opposite principle, there's a tendency mm-hmm. for Americans to project that onto other nations other places. You know, the young lady that I just had on, family escaped mm-hmm. escaped very dangerous criminal circumstances in the Honduras. And mm-hmm. so when, as Americans, in our, our kind of pattern of thinking, we think it's the other guy that everyone else and doesn't have liberty. Yet, by most independent right. assessments, the United States is not even, I believe, in the top ten in terms of personal liberty in, in nations in the world. So, exactly. So, Again, it's happening here. It, it's this is not some fictional concept that we're putting our tinfoil on in the morning and trying to project on to other people. You know, um, the way our lives are regulated now, compared to what we fought for in the American Revolution, how do you think our founders would feel if they looked looked at us right now, if they were with us? Oh, you know, I think they would. Uh... Most of them would think we were foolish, you know, uh, because uh, you took we, we 13 sovereign states, sovereign countries who banded together to form a limited central government. And, uh, you know, now we have a huge central government that tramples every day on the on the on the, the sovereignty of the states, you know. So. No, absolutely. Um we talk about we, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these things and hold that where governments exist, they must not violate the rights of any individual, namely the right to life. According, mm-hmm. we, we support the prohibition of the initiation of physical force against others, the right to liberty of speech and action. Accordingly, we oppose attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press as well as government censorship of any form. Mm-hmm. That's the first two of, of three. How is it as a nation? The first, the, the first two of yeah, the three. But how is it as a nation? We've come to the point where when I read the opening statement about the omnipotent state, and when I say those things, those sound almost boldly revolutionary. I mean, yeah, they are. They are revolutionary, Pat, because it's like I said, uh, Ovid made the statement that we're bar- I'm a barbarian because no one understands my words, right? 
Well, the words of the founders, you know, I see conservatives among my friends who, who they, they, they quote Ayn Rand, they quote George Orwell, they quote, uh, you know, some of the same people that, that some of the founders issues of freedom and, and liberty and they turn around yet they're, they're willing to give up liberty in order to, um, you know, um, uh, have security. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, and, 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 and they use, allow government to use force in order to, uh, you know, it's got to argue, a discussion today, not an argument, a discussion, it wasn't really argument, on Iran and how uh, Iran, um, uh, the, this, this individual was saying that, you know, he was going back 40 years to actions Iran did in the 80s uh, as basis for our country to invade them now, hmm. right? And that the, that the uh, that the agreement that uh, the various countries made with Iran were uh, you know um, uh, was broken, and I said no, only the United States has broken that agreement, and the other the other countries involved in it. So um, we've got people in the White House and in the Defense Department who are willing to put 120,000 troops in Iran as well as a, as, as, as a carrier and B-52 bombers for no action at this present time taken against the United States. Right. Personally, you know, our own sovereignty, you know, um, actions they may take there are quite different than uh, if they take an action in the Gulf it's still not our responsibility, is it? You know. No, and you have individuals like John Bolton, to be specific, um, who, quite frankly, I'm convinced, are looking for their own personal Gulf of Tonkin. You know, if, if yep. we if we can somehow stimulate a violent attack, then that'll justify us being quote unquote preemptive, and that'll justify us right. ultimately grabbing, again, using coercion and force. To grab the property of others. What's what's that simple yeah. saying? Don't 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 take other people's and break other people's stuff. I mean, that's very often it really just come, it come, comes down to that. Um, yeah, exactly right. The the right to property, and this is possibly the most contentious right now, because <laughs> our government clearly believes that in their morality that if we betray their definition of morality, then they have the right to confiscate private property. Uh, do they yeah. have the right to confiscate private property? No, they don't. And, uh, you know, I mean, they do by their rules, unfortunately. But, you know, um, I think the basis of uh, our, our being as libertarians, mm -hmm. David Nolan said that... Uh, the most important principle for libertarians is the principle of self-ownership mm -hmm. as set form in the preamble and the statement of principles. You see, um, self-ownership, that's our property. We're our property. And the government wants to control not only our physical property, but our very beings. And, uh, you know, I, I made a comment on a friend's post, Facebook post last night that, you know, um, you think the Taliban is bad for, you know, implementing Sharia? Well, here's the state of Alabama. Hold my beer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, you yeah. know because, uh, you know, it's, it's what the state of Alabama did. um did 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 yesterday? Um, is that uh, is that any more manipulative of every facet of a person's life? You know, than what uh, uh, you know. Now, it, they it, claim Sharia law would be. Yeah, no, I, it's 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 astonishing because these very same people 
are the first to drape themselves in the American Constitution and the American flag. Yet at the same yeah. time, I believe are criminally violating the Bill of Rights in its in, in, in not only in its in its writings but in its spirit. You know, I I, yeah, I, I think right. I think of the SOP as sort of our Bill of Rights, our Declaration of yep. Independence, all kind of all, all yep. kind of wrapped up in one. Yep, I agree with you. Since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations amongst individuals. People should not be forced mm -hmm. to sacrifice lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another and free traders, and the resultant economic system, the only one compatible with the protection of individual rights, is the free market. All over the place, we just passed a law in Rhode Island, that kind of one of these stealth laws, which created a $49 million investment fund for small businesses to be run by the Commerce Corporation of the great state of Rhode Island. Now, for purposes mm -hmm. of tonight's conversation, we'll ignore the, the past, let's just say, <laughs> performance of said organization, which has been an abject failure. But doesn't that perfectly illustrate this point? You are using the coercive nature of taxation to effectively engage in redistribution of property. Yet, amongst, sure. amongst your friends uh, who possibly support the current president, who maybe not, if you were to say that, how do you feel about people who use force to redistribute property, what would they say normally? Yeah, well, depends. On, you know, my, my conservative friends seem to go along with it. You know, in Tennessee, we have a super duper majority of Republicans in our state legislature. And, uh, you know, we have two big projects. One that they spent, uh, you know, over $900 million for 3,000 jobs and bring $900 million in in benefits of all types for Volkswagen to come to Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. Then we have a industrial park on the Tennessee River at the juncture of the, the Mississippi and the Tennessee or down there somewhere in that area that we have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on and there's not a single structure been built there yet, see. They took the property, they built, a, uh, uh, you know, put in roads and and divided things up and put in a water system and put in, you know, a septic system and electric and all this. The state did. And, and, and in the seven to ten years since it's existed, nothing has happened there. Right. No one wants to come there, you see. You know, it had been better off letting private enterprise pick their own, you know, um, place to put their own business, Right. And then work that out between other property owners. Right. You know, pro we, we don't need government to take our property and give it back to us in, a, in an adulterated, often filtered form. People engage in consensual business relationships. That's if, if you notice, that's the theme for tonight. All the time, without government, yep. profits are made, lives are enhanced, people are hired, wealth is created, innovation takes place. Yep. All right. because people engaged in mutually beneficial consensual relationships, and isn't right. that really the core of our outlook on life? Yeah, sure, it's supposed to be. You know, I, I look at my dad as a perfect example of someone who saw a niche in the construction world, right? Who made that niche into a very solid, built that niche into a very solid business over a period of years, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and did so without, uh, you know, handouts, you know, from somebody else, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's, that's the way that we're supposed to operate, right? Unfortunately, I've only got two or three minutes left, but what I'd like to close on, what is the radical, the Libertarian Party Radical Caucus's role or job, if you will, when it comes to the statement of principles, why, why, why do we feel like we need to exist in addition to the Libertarian Party? What role do we fill? Well, okay, what role we fill is, is, is four points, Pat. 
One is our, our rights are utilitarian. You know, the, the central commitment of the Libertarian Party should always be individual liberty. That there is no essential separation between rights and the utility, utilitarianism, right? Mm -hmm. That is, the morally correct choice will always yield the most benefit to the great number, greatest number of people, right? Right. Number two is radical abolitionism, right? We, um, we as libertarians, you know, people talk about, well, what would you take down first, right? Well, as, as radical libertarians, um, it doesn't matter what comes down first, right? Whether it's uh, the, the Department of Education, the Federal Reserve, or any of those things, there, there's nothing, we, we, want it, we, want, we want all of that that's gone, right? right. We don't, want, we, we don't, we don't, there's no step, step, by step process of how we will do that, right? And the more we can get rid of, the better off we are. Um, you know, we also believe in parental, popu parental populism and that the Libertarian Party should be a mass participation party operating in the electoral arena and elsewhere devoted to consistent Libertarian principle mm -hmm. and committed to liberty and justice for all. The, the, the Libertarian Party should trust in and rely on individuals to welcome a program of liberty and justice and should always aim to convince people of the soundness of Libertarian principle. You know, and then finally, um, no particular order. You know, let's just, whatever harmful policy is out there, let's just get rid of it, right? Right. And there's no, you know, it's just a, it's like I said, it's pushing Wiley Coyote off the cliff, waiting for him to go poof when he hits the ground, right? Right. And, uh, you know, and, that's, and that's it. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Let's do this again in a couple of weeks. We'll kind of, we're going to be uh, two, right, of, we'll do it, Pat. Two, two of the, uh, I guess to say, two of the older members, if you will, <laughs> of the, yeah. the, the libertarian movement. I think... Um, I, I really enjoy talking to you, and I, 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 what I want to do is essentially over time bring people back to their libertarian roots. A lot of confusion out there right now. We're not here. We don't sit in judgment of yep. anyone, but I think our goal nope. is, is to simply bring us back to our roots and have conversations with people and, and, and foster understanding of what – not that anyone is – one individual is more libertarian than the other – but simply nope. come to an understanding of what being libertarian really means. That's right. That's and, exactly right. And if we can do that in the run-up to 2020, you and I will accomplish a whole hell of a lot. That's right. God bless you, lad. Tom Arnold. Thank you, my buddy. A, 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 a warrior, if you will, for not just libertarianism but radical libertarian joining us tonight. And we talked about the statement of principles. Thanks for joining me again, bud. I really appreciate it. Well, that brings, right, us to, right. brings us to a close tonight. We are the coalition, loud and proud. As always, we stand outraged, porn free. As always, we are civilly disobedient. As always, we broadcast on the Worldwide Coalition Media Network. Take a moment, if you hear this now or in the coming days or weeks, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the coalition radio, on the Mighty Mighty Twitter at coalition underscore radio. Feel free to reach out to us, check us out, as we get, start to approach election time, if you're a libertarian candidate and you'd like to spend a little bit of time on the air, these are, these are a friendly place to get used to being on the media. We call ourselves kind of the, the AAA here. Come on, tell us not just you should get elected, but tell us why you should. Bring us up to date on local issues. And it's in the support for the grassroots element of the Libertarian Party that will grow and actually in mine and Tom's lifetime, defeat the omnipotent state. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Friday.